what we'd like to talk about today are arrays and clusters. Um, as we all know, arrays are simply a grouping of the same thing. Okay, in this case, you can see what I've done is I've created an array of real numbers. Okay, I can look at what this array is. Um, I can change what his array size is to, now to add multiple dimensions. Okay, so the array container, and there's one for the front panel, which allows you to make controls or indicators, and there is also an equivalent array container for constants over here, which you do the same thing. You just create the container and then you can drop the value into it. And if I change what his representation is, I can change what his type is. We have a number of things that we can do with arrays, okay? If we look at the array palette, we of course can get an array size. The array size output what it will do is look at the array and say, oh, how big is this guy? And it will give you an array of values, okay? If it's a one-dimensional array, it will give you the size of uh, the one dimension. If it's multi-dimensional, like this guy is, now what I'll get is two values in its array, one for the number of rows and one for the number of columns. Another useful thing is being able to index the array. So I'm gonna switch this guy back to a one dimensional for the moment and wire him in. And you can see that what I have here is this will go allow, allow me to go get whatever values. So let's just say I'm gonna say three here, okay? So I'm going to go get the third element in this array. Arrays start at zero, so this would be element two down the array, okay? And this will return what that value is. If this is a multi-dimensional array, so let's turn him into a two, notice that this guy immediately changes. So now I have an index for rows and an index for columns. In this case, I have the row wired and the column is not, okay? So what I'm going to get back is I'm going to get the third row and all of the columns into it. So I'm going to get a one dimensional array. I could just as easily wire both of them. And now what I'm going to get is a single element. I'm going to get row three, column three, okay? I could swap that if I wanted to, Let's get rid of this one. And I could leave this one disabled. Now I'm going to get the third column, and I'm going to have an array that is every value in the third column. Very, very simple system to do, okay? We can build arrays, okay? A couple of ways to build an array. One is to use the build array tool, and we can wire arrays into the build array, okay? And for instance, we're gonna do him, and then we're going to add another uh, value here, and I probably don't want to do this just yet that way. Let's drop this back to a, um, a one-dimensional array for the moment. Doop, there we go. Get rid of that. Okay, now I can add an element here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the one-dimensional array. So he's gonna have boom, 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 and then I'm gonna add this element to the end of it. So the build array allows me to add individual elements and I can make this as big as I need it to be. So I can add sequential elements to my array. Very, very simple system. Um, it gets a little more complicated when you start dealing with multi-dimensional arrays, okay? For instance, now I have a two-dimensional array coming in. If I want to put a single element into a two-dimensional array, whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. If I wanna put a single element into a two-dimensional array, okay, I'm gonna have a problem because it needs to be an array input. I have an array of, of two dimensions, I can't put a single element in one place with the build array, all right? What I can do is to have 
a one-dimensional array. And we're just gonna go drop something in there. So now I have a 1D array. So I can wire a 1D array in. And you'll notice that what I get here is I'm going to take this 1D array and I'm going to add it to this 2D array so that I should end up with another row or another column depending on how my arrays are formatted, okay? Notice that concatenate inputs here is check marked and grayed out because that's what I'm doing. I'm adding this array, just concatenating it to it. If this is a two-dimensional array, let's make him two dimensions now, you can see I have a little different situation. Now I have two-dimensional arrays trying to be glued together, which it has trouble with, with. Concatenate inputs would generate a new two-dimensional array that has this one tacked on to this one, okay? If concatenate inputs is not turned on, it's going to try to take this and give me a four-dimensional array out, all right? But again, arrays are all the same item. I can insert into an array, I can delete from an array, I can get an array subset, um, I can get min-max of an array, okay? So I could drop a min-max here, and let's change this guy back to a single and wire him in right here like this. And you can see that what I can get now is the maximum value and the minimum value and also where within the array they appear. Very useful tool. Initialize array lets me set up an array and fill it with blank values. How many values do I want and what value do I want it to be, okay? Uh, array subsets, of course, and then there are other things that we can do if you want to get into matrices and things like that. So arrays are extremely useful tools. Again, the downside you have to an array is that it all has to be the same thing. What happens if you want to combine and carry together groupings of different types of things? In other words, let's say, for instance, I've got a numeric value and I've got a Boolean switch and I've got a string value, okay? And I want to clump these all together so that they always stay connected to each other. I can use what is called, oops, get the right thing here, a cluster, okay? A cluster is a container that allows me to put things in, there we go, so that now this right here is one element. And now, if he's one element, then the next question obviously is, how do I get information out of that? Because there's now multiple things in one piece. We use what are called bundle and unbundle, okay? I'm going to unbundle this by name, and we're going to turn him on right like this. And you can see there's my string value that I had just a minute ago. That's the string I dropped in. There's my Boolean, and there's my numeric. So I can go in and I can get out any one of these I want. Either I can pull it down and get all of them that way, or I can just right click on it and tell it I want to select, I want the numeric value and get just one of them. So it allows you to access those. We can of course also write to these with what's known as a bundle. We got a couple of choices here and I'm going to pick bundle by name, okay? And I'm going to create a local variable for this guy so that I can write to it. All right, so here I'm gonna to write to it like that. And notice that he's broken. He's broken because he doesn't know what elements are in there yet. All right, so typically what you do with this is you create a read variable of that guy and glue him to that. And now notice there's my string, okay? If I go to select item, I could pick any one of those that I want, or I can drag this down and get multiples. I can get two things, 
let's say I want to do the Boolean and the numeric, or I want to do all three of them. Uh, so I need to also get the string value. So now I've got all three. So what's going to happen is anything I put in here then will be written into this cluster. Okay. We can also create arrays of clusters very easily. Oops, we're going to go here. We're going to create a new array container right here. And we're going to make him bigger. And we're going to, I'm going to make a copy of this before I drop it in there. There we go. So now this is an element. And now I have an array of these elements right here. And again, I access these the same way you would access any other array as you do an index of the array, okay? And the output is one of these clusters. So if I do an unbundle, unbundle by name right there, you can see that I can get to my individual elements, all right? There are also a couple that are called unbundle and bundle that are not by name, okay? These are a little bit uh, easier to, to give you room. In other words, if you, if you have long names, these guys get big, all right? This guy is only going to contain what the type is. And the order that they show up in here, okay, is based on the order that you dropped them into the cluster. If I had done a different ordering, these would show up differently. Now, I can change this. Oops, got to get this guy to the right thing. All right. It is possible to reorder the controls. You can see these are, say what they are. All right, I'm going to make that guy zero and that guy one and that guy two now. Okay, so we're going to save that. And notice that over here, oh, that was cluster two, sorry. I need cluster one right here. Do, 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 do. Stop. Thank you. Got a wire to the right one here. There we are. So now you'll see that unlike string Boolean numeric, now I have numeric as first, then my string, and then my Boolean. So I can reorder them. But the only thing you know here is what that order is. The only way to check that is to come over to, to the original cluster and tell it to reorder them and see what order they're in, okay? That is clusters and arrays.